Why do we sleep? What is gravity? And how do we even exist? These are just some of the questions we won't be answering as we cover the top 10 bizarre scientific mysteries they don't want you to know. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Venus landscape. Many people would call Venus an absolute hellscape and for fair reasons. It's the second planet from the sun, but somehow it manages to be the hottest planet in our solar system, which in part is due to the almost entirely carbon dioxide atmosphere. There are clouds of sulfuric acid that hover above the volcanic landscape and lava flows, and the pressure is immense, sitting at around 92 times the pressure you would feel on Earth at sea level. Here's where the mysterious part comes in, however. It is thought that Venus was once a planet that was actually very similar to Earth, a planet with oceans of liquid water, one that could potentially support life. So what happened? While it leaves us with scientific mysteries, it also leaves us with existential questions as well. The Earth and Venus are like siblings. They were made at the same time, they're made of the same stuff, yet Venus is awful and apocalyptic and Earth is a paradise for us. How could this have happened? Theories range from Venus being cooked by the sun to Venus being cooked by volcanoes and hot magma. I don't have the answers to Venus's mysteries, but I can definitely say that I am glad it happened over there and not here on Earth. In our number nine spot today, we have the Patom Crater. Located in Siberia, there is a giant crater that has origins we can't quite figure out. Patom is giant at 520 feet wide and 139 feet tall, and it's basically made up of broken limestone. Some people who are local to the area refer to it as the fire eagle's nest and tend to associate the mound with death because of the lack of plant growth on it and apparently also the lack of animals that are willing to go near it, which is always a good reason to stay away from something. If the animals don't like it, they probably have some sort of reason that our senses aren't picking up on. The crater was first discovered in 1949 by a Russian geologist, but despite all of the years it's been, we still aren't quite sure how it came to be. While we aren't sure, we have plenty of possible theories that include an ultra-dense meteorite that had sunk underground after impact, or others suggest it might be a fragment of the Tunguska meteorite. Some believe it's the breakthrough of a pocket of natural gas, but at this point, despite several scientific expeditions to the crater, the origins of it are still mysterious as ever. Maybe one day we'll know for sure, but it's entirely possible that we may never know. In our number 8 spot today, we have tardigrades. What in the world are these things? We know that they're little eight-legged microorganisms, we know that they're most often found in mossy trees, and we know that they basically have superpowers considering how they can live without water, they can withstand temperatures as extreme as negative 200 degrees celsius all the way to 150 degrees celsius. They can even survive in outer space. This is exactly why people are speculating where they are even from, as some people think that maybe outer space is where they came from. There are of course others who believe that they are from this earth, but even with the most elaborate gene sequencing, scientists aren't able to exactly figure out what they are or even what phylum they belong to. They are pretty much an anomaly here on earth, and while they are super interesting, they are also super mysterious. What do you guys think? Some sort of extraterrestrial organism, or perhaps just an earthly phenomena? Are they worms? Are they insects? Are they crustaceans? Or are they aliens? Who knows? In our number 7 spot today, we have the octopus exodus. Okay. Octopuses are already mysterious. They've got a ton of legs, they're elusive, they're way too smart, but why did they walk out of the sea? I'm not bringing forward some new evolution theory, I'm talking about when, in 2017, dozens of octopuses just emerged from the sea and started to crawl along the coast of a seaside town in Wales. They just went out for a nightly stroll, and no one knows why or where they were off to. There are multiple theories that have been put forward that include things like octopus dementia, which is a whole other story, displacement because of storms, or perhaps a population boom that left octopuses searching far and wide for food, and while these are all relatively reasonable explanations, they fail to explain why this mass octo exodus stopped abruptly just three days later. Yeah, it's really weird. I wish we could just pick the brain, well, 
one of the nine they apparently have, again, a whole other story, of an octopus for a ton of reasons. But finding answers to this mystery just might top the list. In our number six spot today, we have bilingual. Okay, this is a true story that has to do with a person named Ben McMahon. So while in high school, Ben started to learn Mandarin, but really only got to a level where he could have very basic conversations. We're certainly not talking about him being fluent. So anyway, after high school, in 2015, Ben was unfortunately in a really bad car accident where he was t-boned from the side and this resulted in him being rushed to the hospital and placed into an induced coma for a week. When he woke up he began to get frustrated when he realized that no one could understand what he was saying. That was until a nurse who had the ability to speak Mandarin overheard him and was able to understand exactly what he was saying. When Ben awoke from this coma he was no longer speaking English, he was fluently speaking Mandarin only. To make this even more curious, Ben had no concept that he was speaking speaking another language. He says there was no English to Mandarin translation happening in his head. It was simply just the most natural thing coming out of his mouth. After some time passed, Ben was able to regain his memory and ability to speak English, and he is now able to differentiate between the two, but exactly how this happened is a true mystery to experts. According to Ben, one of the leading theories is that, quote, for English speakers, most of our language memory is on the left side of the brain, but for some reason, Mandarin speakers use both hemispheres of the brain more than, say, your average English speaker. And I received most of the impact on my left side, so that side needed to rest and repair itself. Potentially what then happened is the brain went, okay, the left side needs to go into more rest, let's shift the language activity over to the right side. And for that reason, maybe Mandarin became more natural. Whatever really happened here remains a mystery, but it truly is fascinating and shows the unbelievable abilities our brains have that we aren't always even conscious of. In our number five spot today, we have the North Pole. We've all heard plenty of stories about the North Pole on our planet. I mean, maybe we know it as the place where Santa and the elves live, or maybe we know it as just the northernmost point of the Earth, diametrically opposite to the South Pole, but either way, we talk about it. You know what we don't talk about enough though? The North Pole of Saturn. If you're thinking, well, what could be so special there, you came to the right place. At Saturn's North Pole, there is a weather system the size of two Earths, which is already startling, but here's the curious part. It's shaped as a hexagon. This is weird because the only other naturally occurring hexagonal shape scientists have found is in crystals. So. How exactly is this happening? Despite this weather system being observed and photographed by NASA's Cassini spacecraft for years, it still remains a total mystery to us. Couple this with how the storm somehow turned from a turquoise color to a yellow color in just a few years and we truly have a baffling weather mystery. In our number four spot today, we have Tabby Star. All right. It's about time we start asking the real questions, and by that I mean, what is going on with Tabby Star? KIC 8462852, or Tabby Star, is located just 1,500 light years away from us, but the mystery of it lies in how it keeps experiencing a dimming in its brightness of around 22%. Normally, stars only see a dimming of about 1%, so this is obviously an extreme jump that has us intrigued. What exactly is going on here? Honestly, there are people out there who believe that this dimming is proof of some sort of structure passing in front of it in a sort of orbit. Like, I don't know, maybe the sort of thing an advanced civilization could build? I'm all up for the idea of aliens, but I know that's not everyone's jam, so maybe we can just chalk it up to some sort of space situation that we have yet to discover. Considering how terrifying of a place space is, that isn't exactly comforting. At this point, we aren't sure what is causing the dimming, but it's becoming abundantly clear that the possibilities right now are endless. In our number three spot today, we have sleep. Why do we sleep? It's my favorite part of every day, and even if we didn't need it, I feel like I would still do it because it's the most peace I get in a day. But despite how much I love it, no one is exactly sure why we do it. Of course, people have been researching it for decades because we've done it since the beginning of our existence, but despite the many, many theories out there, we still aren't quite sure. We know a lot about what's going on while we sleep, we just don't know why we need it. There are many other animals that also sleep like us, but there are also tons of life forms that don't. These include jellyfish, bacteria, plants, sponges. So why do higher animals have to sleep in order to stay healthy, sane, and I don't know, alive? There must be some sort of evolutionary advantage, but we still have yet to explain exactly why, where it started, but honestly, I'm okay with this mystery. As long as we're doing it, I'm happy. 
In our number two spot today, we have gravity. Prior to the 1600s, if you were to bring up the idea of gravity to someone, they might think you were a witch. Or perhaps the devil. I mean, a woman who could do basic addition back then was surely a sign of something dark, so talking about some invisible force that holds us to the earth? Forbidden. That was until Isaac Newton came along and said, hey, why does the apple fall down from the tree? Why not, like, sideways? And thus, gravity was born. That's not exactly how it happened, but you get the idea. Gravity is very obviously important to us, and not only because it keeps us here on the planet. I mean, the moon's gravity causes the tides of our ocean. Gravity keeps us in orbit in our cozy little solar system home with our nice warm sun. We know these things, and we're pretty positive that it exists, but how much do we really understand it? We know that this force is generated somehow from matter, and that the more massive an object the greater its ability to attract other objects. So we understand how it acts, but we don't know why it exists. Why are atoms mostly empty space, and why is the force that holds them together different from gravity? What even really is gravity? Is it a particle? With our current understanding of physics, we aren't really able to answer these questions. Maybe we just don't have the technology or the capacity yet, or maybe it's just meant to forever be a mystery to us. Either way, although it's a mystery, I'm glad it's around. In our number one spot today, we have matter versus antimatter. Okay, so based on what we currently understand and believe about particle physics, matter and antimatter are equal, but they're opposites. So they should basically just destroy each other and then leave nothing, and most of this should have happened in the very, very early beginning days of the universe, but I mean, it obviously did. Somehow there was enough matter left over to then make billions and billions of galaxies, stars, planets, us. But this contradicts that one would assume that the universe would treat matter and antimatter symmetrically, which would then mean that at the moment of the Big Bang, equal parts of matter and antimatter should have been created and then completely cancelled each other out, leaving nothing in its place. Somehow there was an excess amount of matter that went on to survive, and we don't know how or why. Yes, I am saying that we don't know why anything exists. Yes, this may make you have an existential crisis. Welcome to the club, my friends. Despite Despite a ton of research being put into it, we still aren't very close to understanding the mystery of why there is more matter than antimatter. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!